Hello, fire goddesses, and welcome to episode 91. You know, you probably heard this quote before by the Buddha, who said that the greatest cause of all suffering is attachment. And in today's episode, I'd like to explore that a little bit more, see how you are attaching to certain things, whether they be objects, whether they be your personal belongings, whether they be your habits, your thoughts, your behaviors, other human beings. And it might just be something that you don't fully realize you're doing it. It could be very subconscious. And when you are holding on or attached, it is keeping you stuck. It is keeping you often miserable and unhappy. And it is preventing you from living a life of freedom of joy, of inner peace, because that is possible, by the way, but you need to let go of the attachments first. So I hope you like this episode. I real I put it together with the intention of really delivering something that is inspiring, attainable, and also giving you tips and things to think about and journal on right away. So fire goddesses, stay tuned. Hello, fire goddesses, and welcome to episode 91. As you know, my name is Angela Noel, and welcome to another episode. How did you like the previous episode with Lizzie Cangro? We talked about nutrition and letting go of that inner mean girl and just ending societal expectations and norms and rules around diets. If you didn't pick that one up, definitely go back and listen to that one. It was so, so good. Also really refreshing to have a guest on the podcast again, get back into the podcast because I took a bit of a break, as you know. And actually in a future episode, I'm going to chat a little bit more about my previous six to seven months because I think it's really important to talk about the whys behind the break that I took. So that episode will be coming out shortly, but today I wanted to talk about something else that was really, that's really been ringing in my mind and it was prompted because I, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but I moved recently and I, in the process of moving, I was forced, not forced like somebody was, you know, making me do it, but I chose to look at all of my belongings and decide for myself what I wanted to keep and what I didn't want to keep. And I know this is a normal process with moving. We purge, we get rid of things, we donate, we sell. But for me, it felt like more than just that because... If you don't already know, this past year I went through a divorce, so that was what prompted the move as I moved into another home. And this move specifically felt very energetically charged. Like every time I made a decision about keeping something or releasing something, it felt literally like this energetic shift in a positive direction. And I also have to add that I'm, I'm in my new home now and I still continue to go through this process because there were times when I would go into my marital home and just the last thing I wanted to do was pack boxes. And so there were times where I just, when I wasn't sure about things, I put them in a box and now I'm still sorting and sifting and going through things. But as a result of purging and going through this process, It really forced me to look at purging certain things that maybe in normal, maybe we're taught that we don't get rid of. So heirlooms that come from family that are passed down to you or photographs, for example. And that's what I want to dive in today and not specifically to talk about getting rid of these things, but the meaning we put on purging and getting rid of certain things and the attachments we have to these things 
and how it could potentially affect our life. So I got the idea after I, I don't know, in the last year I actually was kind of, I've always been a one that just gets a lot of satisfaction around letting go of things. Like to me, that's just, I, I think in my heart, I'm a minimalist. I don't live that way um, because I still enjoy material things. Um, like a lot of people, I like to have nice things. I like to have my, my things, you know, and there's certain things like my, my art supplies, even though I don't, I haven't used my art supplies. <laughs> I like having things like that in my possession. And then there's other things that I just, I find I feel really, really heavy when I hold on to them. So in today's episode, I want to chat a little bit in depth about this because I know that there are listeners and goddesses out there that may be holding on to things, maybe not even knowing their why or maybe not even realizing they're doing it. Holding on to things because they feel like that's just something that you do. It's a, it's just, it's like an appendage. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't leave your house without your arms and your legs, right? Unless you had an accident, you know, hopefully you don't. You wouldn't leave a house without these certain items. And, you know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s where there were... <laughs> It's so I it's so this is so not like me to talk like this. I'm hearing myself say this and I'm like, oh goodness. When I was, you know, back when I was growing up, I I don't consider myself to be that kind of person, but just to give you a, a, a reference, I grew up, you know, in the 70s and 80s where we had photographs. We took photographs. And so over time and I remember when I got, you know, I had my um my Polaroid and then I had my my first like 110 camera and then I had my first 35 millimeter camera and so on and so forth and as a result and I think you know I've always loved photos and pictures and I like the process and take of taking them and then going to get them developed and getting them back like that was always so much fun but over time as you can imagine maybe you have done this too, I accumulated a lot of pictures because I think I got my first camera when I was like seven or eight. And so what am I going to do with all these photographs? You know, so they're the pictures that I took as a young child. Some of them are really good, but honestly, most of them were pictures of my cats and my dog and, you know, random pictures of my, my baby sister when she was a baby and she's not a baby anymore, but, (laughs) um, you know, and of my friends and, you know, they weren't really good quality. They were kind of grainy and the, the, the colors have faded. And, you know, in some instances, it's fun to keep those pictures. But honestly, when I started to go through some of this stuff, I really started to question why I was keeping these things. Like, did I really need 25 photos of my kittens? Um, well, some of you might be out there saying, absolutely, you want to keep all the pictures of your kittens. And I felt that way too. Like I was one of those people, had tons and tons of cats. You know, we had one cat that became five cats, which became, we, we always had a female cat that was having babies and we would give the babies away to people. So I, I always had a lot of kittens. So as a result, you could probably imagine I had a lot of photos of them and I'm such an animal lover that I just kept on, I, I just took a lot of photos of, of my pets. And then there were the photos that were passed on to me from family, like pictures of my grandparents, pictures of my relatives, you know, back, back in the day in the thirties, the forties, the fifties, sixties and seventies pictures that were given to me and passed along and it really got me thinking about my whole process and how many boxes of things that and I've moved now probably I counted this before I've moved probably 20 between 20 to 25 times in my life I might have to look at that but I moved 
I've moved a lot because I've lived in a lot of different places. I went to college where I moved every year. And then after college, I moved like once or twice a year. For many, many years, this went on. So I've had many residences and there were always boxes of things that I was bringing with me in every move. And a lot of times these boxes were just you know, I wouldn't even open these boxes up. They would just be stored in one place until it was time to move and then they would just come with me again. And I I really wanted to investigate my why. What, why was I keeping these things? What gain was I receiving? What benefit was I receiving by having these things? And as a result, what I did was I ended up purging a lot of my photos and other things. I got rid of all of my yearbooks and um, things that I thought I would never ever get rid of because I, I'm i one of those people that I, I loved taking pictures. And so I wanna just talk about this a little bit more and you know, whether it's, it's pictures or it's something else, it might, there might be something that you're hanging on to very, very subconsciously that you don't even know or maybe it's very conscious you know you're doing it, but you can't let go. And I want to kind of dive into this so that maybe you can walk away with some insight around your process and also ways to keep things and ways to release things so that it can be done in an empowering and powerful way so that you can walk away from the process no matter what you decide to do feeling lighter and freer and in your peace when the process is over. So earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, I don't know. I I did two, I wrote two posts on social media and it was really, really interesting. Both of them seem to be very well read. But then there was one where people were just commenting like crazy on it. And I have a feeling maybe even some people may have gotten a little triggered by it because I could just feel the energy in their words when they replied. And it was the post around photographs. I did a post around photographs where I basically explained what I just explained to you, how I recently moved, how I started looking at my pictures and looking into my why and started to examine how I felt by keeping certain pictures in my life. And what it came down to for me personally when deciding what to keep was how did I feel when I saw these pictures? How did I feel about that particular time of my life? Are these pictures that I think in the long run I would benefit from keeping? And really just leaning into my intuition because there were some things that I really felt that I should keep or maybe wanted to keep a little bit but then I knew that I needed to release some parts of my life by letting go of these pictures and it wasn't a matter of there being bad things I didn't I have lived a pretty amazing life I'm very fortunate that way. I've had a lot of great experiences in my life. But what would serve my higher purpose? What would serve my higher self? Would it be to keep these pictures or would it be to release these pictures? And that's really what it came down to. So getting back to the post, I asked people what their thoughts. I really, I just genuinely wanted to know what their thoughts were around keeping photographs or not keeping photographs. And it was really, really interesting. I would say out of everything I've written about publicly and shared publicly on social, this was probably the most, one of the most charged posts I've ever written where people have really just weighed in and really let me know how they feel. Let me know how they felt. And for the most part, people said that they don't throw photographs out and they explained what photographs mean to them. There was a man that said that he lost everything in a fire 
And the last thing that he wants is for his boys to not have pictures. So every year, like he takes thousands and thousands, I mean, a, a very large amount, like tens of thousands of photos every year and then puts them in a book for his boys and then prints out like 10 or 12 books and distributes them out to family and everybody gets one every year. And then there were other people that just said, you know, when I look at old pictures, it brings me joy. And then there was actually another person that said that she recently lost a loved one and basically she inherited all this stuff. And when she looked at this stuff, it, it overwhelmed her. Like she felt like she was in this sea of heaviness. So it was really, really fascinating. And then there were just other people that were like, I never ever in a million years considered doing that before, which was my intention by opening up this conversation. I really like to ask questions to people that I think no one has ever thought of before. Like you would never, there's even, I mean, myself, I never would have thought that it's okay to release photographs until, I don't know, maybe in the last decade or two, I'm not sure. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up on both on this podcast and also just make it public on social media to get people thinking is for exactly that reason, is to get people thinking about what their motivation is for holding on to certain things, whether it be photographs or whether, whether it be something else. Photographs, I felt like it was a good, just a great conversation, but it could be anything. You know, is there something that you're holding on to that you don't even really fully realize you are holding on to it? Or maybe you do know that you're holding on to it, but you don't fully realize how holding on to that makes you feel. Now you might say, I know everything that I have and it all makes me feel really good. And that's great. But chances are, there's a lot of people who are out there listening, who are holding on to things that maybe, maybe they could let go of, maybe they could donate or give away or just open up that conversation in that inner dialogue with themselves. What is causing me to hold on to these things? Is it a matter of attachment? Or is it a matter of joy? Now, maybe you look at that and you, you are attached to the photo or you're attached to whatever the item is. And that gives you joy because it, it allows you to remember a loved one who has passed on. What I invite you to do is really to look inward and see how it feels in your body, your body will tell you how it feels to hold on to those items. And only you know what is best for you. So for me, I, and if anybody from college or anybody from you know my life after college is listening, now you know. I went on a big trip when I was in college. It was my, I guess it would have been my junior year of college, even though it should have been my senior year because I took a little bit longer to, to finish college. But I was with people in my, my year, if that makes sense. And we, I, I think I actually, I talked about this in a previous episode where me, myself, and 15 other people got into a 15 passenger van. So it was a 15 passenger van with 16 people and all of our luggage, all of our belongings. And we had a turtle top and we drove cross country during spring break. So we had whatever you get for spring break. We were there. We were able to take that trip out. We were able to take that trip back and be back in school on time for that Monday that school went back into session. So I had a lot of pictures from that trip. I mean, that was the first time I ever saw the Rocky Mountains. It was the first time I ever saw the Grand Canyon. It was the first time I saw basically the Southwest. I had never really been to the Southwest before, and that was really memorable for me. But I also had a lot of pictures that were taken inside the van that were not the greatest quality, or I was like, oh, I don't really know that I want to remember like so-and-so's feet, or I don't want to remember how swollen my legs were because I was sitting for so, so long 
in a van. I mean, literally, like, I think we only spent a night in a hotel, like, two nights. There were times where I was, I remember feeling really uncomfortable. Even though, big picture, you know, there were some memories. I would never do something like that again. But I chose, and I made a very conscious decision to let go of a lot of those pictures. Not all of them, because some of those photos of the Grand Canyon were just really beautiful. But I let go of a lot of those pictures. I let, a lo- I let go of a lot of the pictures that I took when I lived in Colorado, even though I loved living, living in Colorado. It's a highlight of my life. I still consider it to be one of the best times of my life. But I had a lot of pictures of me partying and of me drinking and of me, um, I don't know, just, I, I didn't want to keep them. I didn't want, it wasn't a matter of feeling ashamed. I wasn't ashamed. I just didn't want that energy. I didn't want those photos and that energy in my life anymore. And what pictures I did choose to keep were some of the pictures of the scenery and the beauty and the times where I just felt truly alive when I lived in Colorado. So I'm bringing this up because I want you to consider, I invite you to consider what it is that you're holding on to that maybe you can let go of. Or maybe you just need a little bit of of an opportunity to consider your why with holding on to things. What you end up doing is your decision. And I respect everybody's decision on what they decide to keep and what they decide to hold on to. And, you know, even with my move, I noticed that I held on to things that I was kind of surprised that I held on to. Like one thing that I really, I personally have a hard time letting go of is stuffed animals. Like I have, I don't have all of my stuffed animals from that I've ever had in my entire life, but I have four of them that I'm looking at right now that I completely and totally adore. I think they're adorable and they give me joy when I see them. And I've had them Some of them I've had for probably 40 years. Well, maybe not that long, because I think the ones that I have now, I got more as like a young adult. So, but that is one thing that I had to really examine. Was I keeping them because they had sentimental value and I just, I felt attached in somehow, but it made me feel really heavy when I had them? Or did I feel, do I feel light and happy? when I have them. And the answer, in this case with the stuffed animals, is that they make me feel light and they make me feel happy when I see them. So, so much to unpack here. I invite you to really, you know, if you're still listening to this episode and you're you're really finding yourself resonating with the words that I'm saying today, I invite you to look in some of the things that you have been holding on to and really dive into how they make you feel. Really, it comes down to how it makes you feel. That would be like my number one takeaway when it comes to purging and getting rid of things. Specifically, things like photographs or things that you always believed you just don't get rid of. Now, if you're listening to this and you're wondering, Well, I don't understand what this episode has to do with transforming my life, my, what it has to do with my physical health and with a lot of the things that I talk about on this podcast, like how is it relevant? How is purging and getting rid of things relevant to the kind of work that I do? And you probably already know that one of the things that I work with really closely with my clients is having them be very, very aware of their energy and protecting their energy and making sure that they're making choices to protect their energy so that they can stay in a higher vibration, so that they can attract what it is that they want in their life. And if you are holding on to things that have an energy to them, that may not feel good, that might feel heavy. Like for me, I'll give an example. 
I had these books. One of the things that I was like just traveling around with forever and ever were, were these books that I've had since my childhood. And some of them I got or acquired or I actually at the time wanted and picked out from my grandparents' house after they passed. And I had just been traveling around with these books and I started to actually, and, and they actually made it to this, to my new location, okay? So I packed them up, I was still like, it was almost like I was on autopilot. Cause I was like, oh, time to move and I need to pack these books. Like, of course I'm gonna pack these books. Like, why wouldn't I pack these books? These books come with me. Like it was a very subconscious, Space that I was coming from when I packed these books. And when I went to unpack them earlier this week, I ended up taking two bags for donations to the library because I started to look at it from a different lens. When I moved here, when I moved out of the marital home and I was working from this space that I've been, I, I really, side note, I'm really, really proud of this space and how it's coming out. So this place that I'm living in right now was where my husband and I used to live for six years. It's a condominium. And we moved in, you know, we bought it in 2008 when nobody was buying anything. We got it for like a steal, basically. and. The people that lived here before were transferred with their company and basically had to move out. So we dealt with the, the bank when we bought this place. And the reason why I tell this story is because the, the people that we bought from were seemingly very meticulous about how they set this place up. Like it was really, really nice when we bought it, like super, super nice like really nice window treatments, nice colors and everything. So we didn't change anything when we moved in. We liked it the way it was. But I don't know, three years into living here or so, I wanted to change the paint. And, you know, it was like, I just wanted to brighten it up. And it was like the typical um, polyurethane, you know, the gleaming hardwood floors that everybody used to talk about around that time. Well, that's not really in style anymore. It's not even something that I wanted anymore. And when I came back to this place, so we rented it out for like six or seven years to tenants, it was time for a change. And I definitely wanted to get rid of that paint because it still had the same colors, which is like terracotta red and like this spicy orange in the bedroom. It was time for all that to go. So I decided new energy, I'm going to redo the floors. I had them sanded down and um, they, they put the floor guys who are amazing, put a natural water base coat, three coats of the natural water base covering on them. And then I basically painted the whole, I painted the whole condo and lightened it up. A lot of it is white or like a very light gray. And I'm totally excited. It looks like a totally different space and it carries an energy, right? So I feel like just by painting, my mom always says this, you'd be amazed what a fresh coat of, what, what a fresh coat of paint does. The energy of this space between me doing work on it and putting a lot of love into it and also just saging it. I just saged a lot of it when I got here and I did a lot of energetic clearing to this space when I got here. It feels really good to be here and as a result, I think like my energy is, has shifted by being here. So when I brought some of those books into my space and I'm noticing myself going through this process of unpacking some of these boxes and I'm like, oh God, like why am I holding on to this book that has moldy pages? Like that smell, like some people love that smell. I like it sometimes too, but for me personally, energetically it was no longer an energetic match it didn't feel good to hold on to it so I ended up getting rid of another two bags of books once I unpacked now I feel like I just went on a tangent there explaining the process of of me painting and and moving and, and purging 
But I guess what I really want to lean into and for you to lean into and why I'm talking about this is because we have an energetic footprint. We have a vibration. And if you are not happy in your life, whether you're just dealing with a lot of physical ailments, you have chronic disease, you have some kind of physical manifestation going on in your body, or you are not attracting the life partner that you want, the money that you want, the inner peace that you want. One of the things that you can do right now is start looking at your belongings and noticing the energy that is carried in your belongings. It might just be like you need to get rid of like one or two things and notice how incredibly better and improved you feel as a result of releasing these things. Oftentimes it's really not anything complicated. We are, even though we can be complicated beings and with all of our emotions and how we tend to like change, like the wind, by the way, we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to change, but we're pretty simple. And it's actually, if we wanna change our lives, we tend to make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be, don't we? So if you are struggling with something in your life, this is a tool that you can use. This is something that you can do right away. You can even do it this weekend. Get out a bag or put it into three different piles, you know, keeping, donating, selling, four piles and throwing away some things you just can't that's one thing I had to really learn about and surrendering is that was actually holding me back with the the releasing of things was feeling like I everything needed to have a home and I couldn't put anything in the garbage and I carried a lot of guilt about that because I'm like you know I'm, I'm really really into respecting the planet that's kind of one of my things But I realized that the guilt of feeling like I needed to do everything perfectly (laughs) was not serving me either. So I ended up putting some things in the trash. And no, and, and the reason why I share this with you is in this process, sometimes just getting started is really overwhelming. Like for me personally, getting started with this process took me a while because I wanted everything done perfectly. I wanted to do the right thing and just know that you're you're perfect just the way that you are and just by you improving yourself by letting go of things that don't serve you whether it be personal items, whether it be thoughts, feelings and actions, whether it be a relationship or a few relationships, whether it be a job or anything, a habit by you simply letting go of something that is holding you back, by that is keeping you stagnant, that is making you feel less than brilliant and bright and light, by you taking small steps several times a week, maybe once a day, you know, according to a schedule that works for you, and by you improving your life, you are doing just fine. You are doing just fine. And I want to really drive that in because... <laughs> You know me at this point. I am all about reversing (laughs) the programming and the indoctrination. And we as humans have been indoctrinated to the point that we are our own worst enemy. And we really hold ourselves back basically because of our limiting beliefs and all of our the things that we do to sabotage our self sabotage and our self destruction. So here's an invitation for you to consider what is causing you to hold on to whatever it is you're holding on to. And a lot of times it comes down to indoctrination, doesn't it? It comes down to a belief that was passed on to you, similar to those heirlooms that were passed on to you that you think that you can't get rid of. A belief you can get rid of. You can let go of a belief and you can choose 
to create your own set of beliefs and your own set of values so that you can design your life according to how you want to live. And if you're listening to this and you're not really sure how to get started, you can reverse engineer this all by starting out with considering how you want to feel, how you want to be, what do you want to do? What do you want out of your life? What do you desire most? Spending some time in your journal, as you know, I love my journaling and I love when, when my clients journal and just work backwards from there and decide what you need to let go of to get to that place. It could be an identity that you need to let go of, an identity that you picked up when you were born or less than five years old. It's really, really amazing when you start to do this work and you, you realize these little subconscious stories, I would say, running in the background, these programs that are running in the background that until you start to really do this work, either, you know, if you're working with a coach, if you're working with me, if you're working with somebody, if you join a group program, when you really start to realize and become acutely aware that these programs are running in the background, it's like, if you think about a computer, I, I mean, I've definitely had my share of my computers just not working or just slowing down. And all it really needed, I didn't need to go out and buy a new machine. It was just that the computer was full of junk and I needed to delete some files that didn't need to be there. It wasn't serving my computer to have these files on there that were just running in the background, clogging the system. So same thing with human beings. What's clogging your system? What can you let go of? And know that no matter what, if you decide you want to get rid of that picture that was passed on to you from your grandparents or whomever, and somebody comes in and says, don't do that, you're going to regret it. Or they try to project their thoughts, their fears, their emotions onto you by shaming you for getting rid of something know that that is on them that is on them and by you giving your power away to other people and other stigmas you're keeping yourself stuck you're keeping yourself stuck so that you you continue you know when you you know, I've been working with clients for a long time, so I know the language, right? They come in, they come to talk to me, or, or we, have, we get on a Zoom call, and they're like, I just feel like I'm on this, this merry-go-round, and I can't get off. Like, I'm in this vicious cycle, and I can't get off. I can't get off. I can't get off. Again, like, what is it that you're feeding your mind? What junk is clogging your system? That you can let go of and you know if you think that even if it's just one thing you let go of if you think that that's not going to make an impact i invite you to consider again what's causing you to believe that and try it try start really you know baby steps that's how i work with my clients baby steps letting go of little things one thing at a time so I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings and reactions to this episode. And if you'd like to work with me, I invite you to hop on a call. Just go on to my website, www.angelanoelinternational.com forward slash links. There are three opportunities to chat with me there. You can schedule a complimentary session where we can just talk together and see if we're a good fit, see how I can support you. There's an opportunity to do a one single session, so a one-time session, and then there's an opportunity to apply to work with me one-on-one -on -one in my four-month men mentorship. So, and then down the road, I am planning a group program. So I'm just putting the bug in your ear now and 
I'm really, really excited about this offer. So you definitely want to stay tuned, follow and make, make sure you're following me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel. Continue to listen to the podcast so you can stay tuned in. If you go to my website, there's always an opportunity to also subscribe to my newsletter. So you are in the know about anything that's going on here. And of course, only if it resonates. So goddesses, I hope that you feel lighter just by listening to this podcast today. It's been a pleasure delivering this to you. Again, let me know your thoughts and your takeaways. Share this with Instagram. Share this episode with your friends. Until next time, goddesses, be radiant, be powerfully authentic, and know that you can reclaim your fire at any time. Take care. Hi, this is Angela Noel, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you have found value in listening to this podcast, I would be so grateful if you could kindly share this podcast with those you care about. Please help me spread the word of empowerment and possibility and expansion by sharing this podcast. Or you could also leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Remember to follow me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel, or you could go to my website at www.angelanoelinternational.com to learn more about my work and to find out how you can work with me. Thank you very much.